On June 16, 1989, the corpse of Natalia Rodnikova, an 18-year-old sales clerk, was found in Lozhka, Iskitim district. The girl had been raped before the murder. Since that day, the burned bodies of young women and girls with bound hands and slit throats have been found along the railroad in Iskitim and Novosibirsk. Investigators immediately realize that a maniac is at work in the region. At the same time, a similar murder takes place in Omsk, but local operatives assure their Novosibirsk colleagues that they have already caught the rapist and he even managed to confess. As it will turn out later, the police, excellent, still captured the wrong one. On September 1st, firefighters in Berdsk stop 30-year-old welder Fyodor Kozlov in his pocket. A knife, a bandage, a band-aid, and a bus ticket from Omsk. 20 years later, Kozlov will be one of the most famous Siberian maniacs. About him even filmed a TV program. But here our eyewitnesses of those events believe that in the written and filmed too much fiction, among which there is no real Iskitimskogo rapist. Criminal journalist NGS Alyona Istomina met with operatives, personally caught serial killer to learn the true story of Fedor Kozlov. About the childhood of the future killer is known little, lived in the Rostov region, poorly educated, but read a lot, was unsociable. Because of the difficult relationship with his parents, at the age of 17, Kozlov moved to live with his 79-year-old grandmother, and here he committed his first murder, in 1976. He raped his third cousin, she was only 11 years old, recalls Sergei Brendan, a former criminal investigation officer for implicit crimes against the person. Grandmother came in at the wrong time, right in the process. This monster was afraid, maniacs in general are cowardly, afraid of punishment. So he hacked both the girl and his elderly grandmother to death with an axe. The regional court in Rostov took into account the age of the killer and sentenced 17-year-old Kozlov to 10 years in a penal colony. In 1986, he was released, did not return home, went to the village of Lozhok Iskitimsky district of Novosibirsk region to a woman with whom he corresponded while still in prison. He found the address in the newspaper in the section of marriage announcements. Operatives find it difficult to say whether the Siberian woman and her parents knew about the criminal past of the chosen one. But in Lozhka Kozlov, as it should be, immediately registered with the district police officer, got a job as a welder. Soon, he had a child. It was difficult for his young wife to manage the infant, and so the family split. Kozlov stayed in Lozhka, and his wife temporarily moved to her parents in Yevsino, Iskotimsky district. That's when Kozlov realized that a quiet life does not suit him anymore. Everywhere it is written that he killed after quarrels with his wife, but it is not so. He killed when he went from work, when he did not see his wife for weeks. The motives are still unclear, he just wanted to kill, that's all. There were no external reasons for the murders, said Boris Ivanov, a former senior operative of the department for especially important cases. On June 16, 1989, 18-year-old Natalia Rodnikova was on a train to Lozhok from Linyovo, where she worked as a saleswoman. She got off at the railroad station and turned down an inconspicuous path. The girl often took shortcuts home. On this path she met Kozlov, who was also walking home after his shift. Then he told us that as soon as he saw her, he immediately decided to rape her, recalls Sergei Brendan. He took out a penknife and led her deep into the thicket. He did his job and killed her with a knife in the neck area, killed her and dumped her there in the hollow, and went back to his house. He couldn't sleep at home. He had a conviction for murder. They might find him and put him back in jail. Kozlov didn't want to go to jail, so he returned to the scene of the murder, threw branches over the body and set it on fire. According to the memories of the operatives, Natalia's family did not find a place all night. Her daughter always came home on time. In the morning, the father of the murdered girl went on the route of his daughter. In the thicket, the man noticed a faint smoke. He came to the spot and saw the remains of a human body, almost completely burned. He recognized his daughter by her sandals, which were lying aside and had not had time to burn, Brandon continues. Such brutal crimes were rare for that time. That's why an investigation and operational group was immediately set up. First of all, all previously convicted persons were checked. Kozlov, of course, was on that list. On the same day to the murderer's home came District Police Officer Sergei Grinenko. But Kozlov behaved confidently, 
at work characterized positively. A decent family man, a child, does not drink. From the look of it, an ordinary man, really on the path of correction. He made a bad check and Kozlov went out of our sight, complains Boris Ivanov. I personally supervised all the certificates that the district officers prepared for such a contingent. And if the inspector had normally described his features, then thanks to the testimony of witnesses, we would have immediately taken him into circulation. And there wouldn't have been any more murders. Two weeks later, Kozlov went on business to Iskatim. He left the station. Twelve-year-old Masha Dorofeyeva was unlucky enough to ride a bicycle. The girl ran over the maniac's leg and stopped to apologize. He pulls out a certificate of a communist labor striker. This certificate belonged to his mother-in-law, recalls retired operative Sergei Brendan. He shows it to the girl. I am a policeman. You need to be punished. But I will not punish you. Tomorrow you will come here. I'll just talk to you. But don't tell your parents about it. Or I will tell them. It will be even worse. The girl did come the next day. The maniac calmly led her to an abandoned two-story house near the Iskatim heat device factory. This time before the rape, the maniac tied the child with white braid, swallow, hands behind her back, legs bent at the knees and tied to her hands, in the mouth, a gag made of leucoplastica. The corpse was found by a worker. He saw smoke, thought that something was burning again, says Sergei Brendin. With a fright, let's scream. A terrible picture set on fire corpse of a child with a knife wound in the neck, in the position of a swallow, tied to a tree. Operatives quickly compared the two murders, similar arson, stabbed in the neck. It was no longer a question of a domestic murder. It was already clear that in Iskatim, a serial maniac was at work. Operatives again worked previously convicted, alcoholics and those who at least once got in sight of the police. But Kozlov was never called for questioning again. In the course of the work of the operative commissioner, Andrei Ptashnikov, receives operational information that in Iskatim there was another attack on a 19-year-old girl. Unsuccessful. The victim did not report to the police. Met our operative with this girl, and she said that she was attacked by a man in the area of the industrial beach, says Sergei Brendan. She was resting in a swimsuit smoking. A guy came up to her and asked for a cigarette. She gave him a cigarette. He took two puffs and threw it away. After that he jumped on the girl and tied her hands with a white-colored bandage. She was a skinny girl, she untied her hands, got free and ran away. She left the ribbon there. They invited an artist who was able to draw a portrait of the alleged rapist from the words of the victim. And this picture was published in all newspapers in the Novosibirsk region, with the caption, He is wanted by the police. Without any details, but all the people of Iskitim already knew why they were looking for this man from the sketch. I invited an artist who was good at drawing. He worked with the victims for three or four hours, thoroughly taking everything out of them. We then released this drawing everywhere we could, emphasizes Boris Ivanov. According to the operatives, in the portrait on the photo, acquaintances recognized Kozlov, jokes in the style of, yes, it's you in the picture, the same shaggy-eared, like Kozlov. They laughed and forgot, no one reported it to the police. After that, Kozlov came home and burned his clothes jeans and plaid shirt, in which he killed. He went to Iskatim, to the market, and immediately bought new clothes. And he told his wife that he had hung the clothes out to dry on the street and someone had stolen them, right off the clothesline. All police forces were thrown into the search for the maniac. All over the region, at every bus stop, at every railroad platform, there were officers in civilian clothes. Kozlov realized that the ring around him was narrowing, so he decided to cover his tracks, to transfer the operatives to Novosibirsk. In early August, the maniac kills the 18-year-old wife of a military cadet. A few days later they find the corpse of a 24-year-old girl. The handwriting is the same, a knife wound, a gag in the mouth, bodies bound with white braid in a swallow position, a bonfire, military, firefighters. The entire city police are involved in the search for the maniac. And he takes a vacation, and goes to Omsk to his wife's relatives for a week. In Omsk, the rapist realizes that he can't hold on. He has to keep killing. According to the recollections of employees, Kozlov said that with the Omsk murder, he wanted to finally confuse the police and take the operatives away from the Novosibirsk region. On August 21st, 
a maniac kills an 11-year-old girl in a city garden in Omsk. Novosibirsk operatives really paid attention to this murder. Again a gag, a swallow pose and a burnt body. In total the maniac has five murders and five attacks on his account. We called with local operatives. They said that they had no similar murders. Is surprised by the former chief of district police Evgeny Dryomov. And in general, we have already solved the murder, the killer confessed. And only when Kozlov was detained, he confessed to the Omsk murder. It was clear that they solved it quickly. But who did they solve? If the murderer. There he is, he's sitting here. But the operatives took the Omsk story on board and continued to patrol the stops and the railroad platform. They killed along the stations. You can't pick up a criminal in an operational way. I suggested that on September 1, when the kids go to school, to wait near the railroad, to raise all the personnel. That's what we did. We provided as much as we could with a walkie-talkie, recalls Nikolai Bikovsky, former chief of criminal investigation of the Novosibirsk Region Internal Affairs Department. In Birdsk, the maniac already had an unsuccessful murder attempt. Then the schoolgirl was able to run out on the road, where she was picked up by a motorcyclist. But on September 1st, the maniac does come to Birdsk again, where he attacks the woman. She breaks free, screams. The screams are heard by two firemen walking on the station square in Birdsk. They start questioning the woman. Yes, abnormal. Just a fool. Tore my sweater. I gave him a slap in the face. Firemen rush in pursuit. Kozlov jumps into the bus, fireman quietly behind him, watching where he will get off, recalls Sergei Brendan. He got off near the lousy hill. They caught up with him and asked for his ID. They checked his pockets, and there was a knife, a white bandage, a band-aid, and a bus ticket with Omsk written on it. At that time, our ticket cost six kopecks, and theirs cost five kopecks. They paid attention to Omsk at once. They asked, where to, where from? Well, he's lying. He doesn't know that he was followed by two employees from Berdsk. At that time, firefighters were part of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, so they detained him. Sergei Brendin was one of the first to arrive at Kozlov's house for the search. He recalls, his mother-in-law and father-in-law were already there. They did not believe in what was happening. And the wife was convinced of her husband's innocence until the last. We invited witnesses, a neighbor comes in. I look closely. So I, just when we made a photo portrait, walked around the park and showed people his card. That's the guy I showed it to. I asked, why didn't you recognize your neighbor right away? And he said to me, I would never have recognized him. Calm, cultured, always says hello, with his child, with his wife. Surprised Brendan. Kozlov quickly gave confessions, including in the Omsk murder. During the investigation, he showed a stone under which he hid the purse of his very first victim. The operatives did not notice it. And in Iskitim, when we wanted to check the testimony on the spot, we couldn't. Because the people gathered at the place where this maniac killed the girl with sticks and stones. They were ready to tear him to shreds. We barely got him away, Brendan continues. A month later, the criminal case was already referred to court. But the maniac did not live to see the verdict. He hanged himself after the prosecutor at the next court session asked to apply to the rapist the highest measure. Firing squad. I remember we were discussing when we would catch this scum. And one of the operatives, I think it was Sergei Brendan, said, He's an asshole, and his last name is Kozlov. Imagine. And he really is Kozlov. We should have watched the former convicts better after the very first murder, complains Yevgeny Dryomov, the former chief of the district police.